Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Rock. And now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to the Acts Ministry podcast. We're still talking about how Jesus views sickness, and we've spent the first four days talking about how he views sickness, or the last four days talking about how he views sickness as a pit, as a pit. And he didn't want anybody to be in the pit, especially his children. And they wanted Jesus just to keep on walking while the child or his children was in the pit. That's something that we wouldn't even do to our children, even if it was just for a few hours. Now, the the thing that, that Jesus said when he called them hypocrites were that when they, if they had a sheep or dunk, donkey in a pit, they would immediately pull them out of the pit on the Sabbath. But for a man, they wanted him to stay in. So we talked about that. I want to move to uh, another passage of scripture where Jesus looks at sickness and he, he really sees it as slavery. He sees sickness as slavery. And he sees healing as bread. So I want us to look at that. It's a very, it's a very powerful text. And I believe that it'll be a blessing to all of us to be able to read this and to see what the Lord Jesus says uh, concerning healing and also concerning the bondage of sickness. In Matthew chapter number 15, and we're going to start at verse 21. Matthew 15 and verse number 21. And we want to talk about this. I want to read it for you and really discuss it. The Bible says this, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, there is a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to Jesus, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But Jesus answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But Jesus answered and said, It's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yea, even the dogs, even the little dogs, eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Jesus said unto her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you even as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very same hour. Now, I want to I wanna look at this because Jesus says something in his comparison of sickness and healing. He says healing in this case, he calls healing the children's bread. The children's bread. Now, if we ever can fixate on, on the point we were trying to make it early this week, that to be sick is being in a pit. Well, now that's how he sees sickness. Now, how, how does he see healing? He sees healing as the children's bread. That is a powerful image that, that healing is the children's bread. Now, when you think about bread, it, it's not something that we would think out of the ordinary to have bread whenever we got hungry. He's not just talking about bread, bread. He's talking about food. So food is something that we, we eat uh, two or three times a day, meals, and, and snacks in between that. We have ready, ready access to food. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Axe Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. 
And what Jesus is saying to us is we should we have ready access to healing. Now, this woman, what you have to know is that this woman was not even a daughter of Abraham. We're going to study uh, the woman that was bowed together. She's a daughter of Abraham. But this woman is not a daughter of Abraham. She's outside of the nation of Israel. She's considered a dog. But uh, Jesus makes a point in telling her that healing is the children's bread. 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 Now, some would make us believe that healing is this extraordinary, uh, very rare, seldomly done act by God, but not Jesus. Jesus says it should be as common as regular as we eat food, as we sit down to have a meal, because it is the children's bread. Now, we have to think about that. Got to wrap your mind around that because that will change everything when we think about healing. Because when we think about healing, there are some people that go through incredible, extraordinary uh, works and legalistic stuff in an attempt to make God do something that he has already done. It is the children's bread. Now, this woman comes, this woman comes, and she's crying out to the Lord Jesus Christ because she doesn't have a covenant. She doesn't have a covenant. She doesn't have a contract. She doesn't have a contract of healing, a contract of deliverance. She's not a daughter of Abraham. But because she cries out to the Lord, and the Bible says she comes and she worships him. And when she worshiped him, the Lord first was ignoring her. He, he didn't say anything to her. He just, he was quiet as she was crying after them because he says the children need to be fed first. You don't take the children's food and give it to the little dogs. You don't, he, he says the children must come first. We got to feed the children first. So why would I take their bread and give it to dogs? And if you're outside of, of the will of God, out of the, outside of the knowledge of God, then it is considered that you're a dog. Now, many people find it very offensive, but if you don't know who created you, and if you don't recognize that he created everything in the universe and that it is, it is he that gives us the ability to inhale, exhale, it is he that we live and have our existence then the Bible says that that lack of knowledge, that ignorance is considered as a brute animal would be, not understanding that it is God that supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And when we are when we are, have a dog mentality, your, your dog doesn't have the ability to thank you, doesn't have that ability to do that, doesn't have the ability to talk, doesn't have a soul. To be, to be thankful. So he says when we act like this animal, as much as much as God does for us, and there is no praise, there's no worship, it's considered a dog. But this woman, this woman came and she began to worship him. And she said, Lord, help me. Now the woman came because her daughter was severely demon-possessed. Her daughter was sick. And this woman was desperate. And she was not going to leave. She didn't, wasn't going to leave even though they, come, they insulted her. The disciples said, uh, send her away. She's bothering us. Can you tell her to leave? You know, sometimes people are so insensitive to the needs of those that are outside of the realm of God or outside of our own families. But Jesus is so compassionate. Jesus is love that he, that he's going to reach across this barrier. That that veil has not been rent in the temple yet. But grace is going to reach across the veil. It is going to reach across the veil and it's going to give her some bread. Now, now watch this. He considered bread. He considered healing the children bread. Now, she says something that is so profound in verse 27. And it says... 
She said, yes, Lord, even the little dog eats the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And what she's saying, even crumbs, a crumb is enough to heal. Because your healing is so powerful and, and it's so plenteous, it's, it's so abundant that, that even, even, even leftover miracles, Father, you, you have leftover miracles. You healed everyone. You, you got miracles in abundance. You, you got healings in abundance. You, you got healings that are left over. Can I get a crumb? Can I get a crumb? And, and when Jesus saw her faith, the Bible says, he says, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be unto you as you desire. Her daughter was healed the same hour. He saw her faith. Her faith moved Jesus. He gave her a crumb. Gave her a crumb. If we just think about that. A crumb of the power, the healing power of God. He's, con he's comparing healing to the children's bread. And he says, if you, just, if you just break off a crumb of the saturated virtue of Jesus Christ. Notice something. Notice, brothers and sisters, that the one with the issue of blood, she didn't, she didn't want to touch Jesus. She didn't want him to put in oil on her. She wanted to touch the hem of his garment to the point that he wouldn't even feel it. She 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 didn't she didn't want a handful. She just want to touch. She didn't want to tug on it. She just want to touch it, touch it, not grab it, touch it. She didn't want him to know, notice that she had touched. She said, "If I can just touch." The reason why Jesus was able to recognize something that happened because virtue left his body, power left his body, just with that. That that you could say was that a crumb? That was just a a, a touch. Not of Jesus, but what he had on. And not a handful, but just a touch of the hymn. Now, you, you know, faith. Faith in God. Faith in God. This woman had faith in God because she had already, already made a confession. She said, if I can touch it, I'm going to be made whole. If I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. I don't need him to touch me. I don't need him to lay his hands on me. If I can just touch his garment, I will be made whole. And when she did... She got a crumb, and the crumb was enough to stop her blood from flowing out of her body that had been flowing out of her body for 12 years. Just the virtue, the virtue of the power of the living God, a crumb, and she was healed. Here he is telling us sickness is like a pit. When we talk about the man with the withered hand, here he's telling us with the woman, the Seraphonician woman, Jesus is telling us, telling us that healing is like bread. It's like the children's bread. And bread is something that heaven has in abundance. Bread is something that we're used to. Bread is something that we partake of uh, many times a day. Food, brother. So he said to us, I have plenty bread for the children. And, and, and not just bread for children, but he says, you know, the crumbs that's outside. Now, one thing we must understand is that even before we knew Christ, even before we came to him, we were receiving crumbs. Before we came, he was still blessing us. He was still helping us. He was still keeping us alive. He was still, as, as we would go to him, and we would make those, those promises that we knew we were not going to keep, and we would say to him, say to Jesus, if you just get me out of this, I'll do right. I'll serve you. I'll go to church. And he would heal us, knowing that we weren't going to obey. He gave us a crumb, though. He gave us a crumb. Now, understand the significance in this. She knew she didn't have a contract because a contract means the children get a chance to sit at the table. Now, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the woman that, that was bowed together. She had a contract. This woman doesn't have a contract. She's outside. She has, she, legally, Jesus doesn't have to do anything to her, for her, or whatever. 
But because of her faith, her faith, her faith causes Jesus to reach across, to reach into the veil. Now, he's going to destroy the veil. It's going to be neither Jew nor Gentile. He's going to make it so we all can come boldly to the throne of grace. But at this time, this woman needed a crumb, not for herself, but for her daughter. A crumb. Imagine, imagine what a crumb of healing would do. A crumb of healing. A crumb of healing went from where they were. This woman that lived in Canaan. A crumb of healing. Left out of the place that Jesus was and his disciples. Left out of the country of, of, of Israel. And, and went. Found this woman's daughter. Distance here. Found this woman's daughter. And, and, and faster than light, she was healed. The woman's daughter was healed. She wasn't with her. She wasn't with the woman. Jesus just sent his word and brought about incredible healing. I want you to stay tuned because I feel our faith is rising and God is setting us up for an incredible move of God. So I want you to study with us, go back and review the podcast, make notes of the podcast so we can get ready to move into another dimension. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, Join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday school begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501 529-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Acts Ministry Podcast. The Acts Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. I I disrespected my parents at, at home, sir. I've been more of a leader than a follower. I've been trying to help others to stay on the right track. Doing good is not really as hard as you think it is. The Arkansas Youth Challenge is enrolling for young people 16 to 18 years old. If you're having trouble in school or at home, call 1-800-814-8453. We support Second Chances.